2011 Margaret Brent Award recipient, Colonel Maritza S. Ryan. Women trailblazers in the legal profession have often been described as breaking through the glass ceiling. But for Colonel Maritza Ryan, the ceiling she encountered was reinforced with brass. The daughter of parents of Spanish and Puerto Rican descent, Colonel Ryan started her military career by graduating from West Point in 1982. No small feat, her class was only the third to include women. Following West Point, Colonel Ryan entered the field artillery, but was able to attend and graduate from Vanderbilt University Law School through the United States Army's funded legal education program, perhaps the most selective educational opportunity in the Army. Selected for her outstanding military record and academic achievements, the then Captain Ryan was chosen by the Army's Judge Advocate Generals, or JAG Corps, and later was assigned as a military advisor to a brigade fighting in Saudi Arabia during Operation Desert Storm. Not only was she one of only a few women in a brigade of a thousand soldiers, but she was also a new mother who had to leave her husband and 14-month-old baby at home. The JAG Corps then handpicked Colonel Ryan to assume a significant position at its Washington, D.C. headquarters. It seems, however, that fate was to put Colonel Ryan into an altogether different and unexpected battle. She was diagnosed with a virulent form of cancer in her leg, and despite the doctor's grim prognosis, successfully underwent treatments for two years. Returning to West Point in 2001, Colonel Ryan was selected as deputy of the Academy's Department of Law, where she was described as being its heart and soul. In 2006, she became professor and head of the law department at the United States Military Academy, a position which required a presidential nomination and confirmation by Congress. And so, Colonel Maritza Ryan became the first female and Hispanic West Point graduate to be an academic head at West Point in its 210-year history. Colonel Ryan has been described as having an innate ability to bring out the best in others and challenge those around her to a higher purpose. Under her leadership, the West Point Center for the Rule of Law was established in 2008. Its purpose is to enrich the experience of cadets through major conferences featuring distinguished speakers and educational trips and activities. The center's point-to-point -point program brings cadets to the slums outside Monrovia to study methods to reinstate the rule of law. The program also works to foster stability and progress for devastated populations such as the Liberian women who faced terrible violence throughout the country's civil war. Quoting Dwight Eisenhower, Colonel Ryan has written that, we are descended in blood and spirit from revolutionists and rebels, men and women who dared to dissent from accepted doctrine. Throughout her career, Colonel Ryan has challenged the accepted doctrine of women's roles prevalent in the military and society and has become a model for women lawyers in uniform. As a teacher and mentor to countless women in the military, Colonel Ryan has made it a top priority to increase the number of women both on the West Point faculty and enrolled at the academy. She is a trailblazer in one of America's elite educational institutions who has created and developed opportunities for women and men alike, thus ensuring the development of thoughtful, ethical, adaptive, and strong leaders regardless of gender. For her professional excellence and continued courage and leadership, the American Bar Association Commission on Women in the Profession is honored to present its 2011 Margaret Brent Women Lawyers of Achievement Award to Colonel Maritza S. Ryan. Uh, I'm just uh, overcome. I was uh, going to say that I was humbled, but that, that doesn't seem to be quite enough the word. Uh, Your Honors, Justice O'Connor, Judge Kay, special guests, the Judge Advocate General of the Army, uh, General D Dana Chipman, who's here today. I am deeply honored to be before this distinguished audience, to be in the company of these inspirational lawyers here on the dais. I am truly grateful to Bobby Liebenberg and the Commission on Women in the Pre Profession and to the ABA for gracing me with what is obviously a, a, an extremely prestigious award. I have to say, uh, my mother who could not be here, but I, I want my sister Debbie, who 
flew up here from uh, Florida with uh, her husband and another West Point classmate, Steve Phelps, uh, to report back to mother that I said, <laughs> as President Lincoln once said of his mother, all that I am or ever hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. So thank you to my mom, Angela. Uh, and that's on behalf of, of my sisters and myself. Recently, I had an opportunity to address not quite uh, this sizable a group back at West Point. The Academy was hosting the NCAA Rifle Championships, and I was invited to speak to the competing teams of student athletes, their coaches, their parents, at a formal dinner banquet. I was introduced as the professor and head of the Department of Law, and I commenced with my talk, which appeared to be pretty well received. Afterwards, one of the parents came up to me. Uh, he seemed particularly excited and inspired by my remarks. Colonel, he said, I really enjoyed your speech. I smiled at him, and it occurred to me, you know, uh, I guess I gave a pretty interesting speech after all. You know, I did work on it. Well, thank you, I said. You know, the sport of rifle does have a fascinating history. Oh, sure, he replied. But what I meant was, when I heard you were a lawyer, I thought you were going to go on talking forever. <laughs> Thank God you kept it short. <laughs> it's great feedback. I'm going with it. <laughs> you know, my husband, uh, Bob Ryan, also class of 82, we met at uh, West Point and uh, began, once we realized we were opposite sex and uh, became uh, <laughs> engaged eventually in our senior year. Uh, one day, Bob and I were on pass and we were driving along in our shiny new 1981 VW Rabbit, which I thought was a really great car. Yours truly at the wheel. I was attempting to exit a parking lot when suddenly, from out of nowhere, another car somehow got in front of me and stopped short. I accidentally but gently tapped its bumper with my own. At that, a man wearing Coke bottle glasses jumped out of his car, ran around over to, the, to examine his car's rear end. No harm done, Bob, I got this, I said confidently as I got out of the car. Well, my car seemed fine, and the other driver's old jalopy, which looked like uh, he had taken a can of neon orange spray paint to the entire vehicle to include the chrome bumpers, seemed none the worse for wear. All right, sir, looks like no damage, I said. I'm sorry for bumping into you. And I headed back to our car. No damage, shrieked the man. You've ruined my car. Where did you learn to drive, you stupid? Insert a long line of expletives and extremely derogatory references to my gender here. Unfortunately for him, I had just taken Law 403, Constitutional and Military Law, still a core course at the Military Academy today, and I knew a little bit about my rights in this situation. Excuse me, mister, but you can't talk to me like that. That's defamation. Under the law, I can sue you for insulting me and slandering my good name. The law, sir, is on my side. With that, the man looked up, abject fear visible behind his thick glasses. He leapt into his car and peeled away from the scene of the accident Tires screaming. That's when it struck me. The power and the majesty of the law. <laughs> yep. How the rule of law was both a shield and a sword. <laughs> Protecting the righteous. Empowering the lowliest citizen. Yes, even a short but deceptively, deceptively strong young woman with self-defense training at West Point. To resist, to resist oppression and injustice. I triumphantly turned on my heels to get back into our car when I ran smack dab into Bob. Unbeknownst to me, while I was dealing with the irate driver, my fiance had very quietly exited the vehicle and was standing behind me. Since Bob was then a strapping army football player, with a huge neck, wide shoulders, and nearly a foot taller than I was, it then dawned on me that uh, <laughs> it might not, in fact, have been the majesty of the law, but rather the, the sight of Bob standing quietly behind me that had encouraged that coward to drive away. And he's been standing by me ever since.
I certainly could never have predicted as a cadet, and thanks to uh, recent President Dorian Denberg of Knoll, fabulous women of Knoll, many of whom have come to support me today, National Association of Women Lawyers, who nominated me, that I would be standing here today in such distinguished company getting an award named after the brilliant, resourceful, and courageous Margaret Brent. I, too, uh, did look up her history a little bit more. I wanted to know more about Margaret Brent. And as a woman and as a, an, a very proud Army lawyer, I couldn't help but note that the issue that famously triggered Margaret Brent to advocate for her right to vote in the Colonial Assembly involved the military. Facing a serious rebellion by a rival faction of colonists, Ms. Brent had taken it upon herself to organize a troop of 28 citizen soldiers to defend the colony of Maryland. Victorious in battle, the militia then turned to the assembly to have them pay their salaries, which in that time was paid in tobacco, corn, and or livestock, as they had been promised. The assembly balked, leaving Ms. Brent, who has, as was mentioned earlier by Paulette, who had been designated the executor of Lord Calvert's estate and his brother, Lord Baltimore, leaving her to find a way to take care of these now near mutinous soldiers. This she promptly did, selling all of Lord Calvert's assets as well as commandeering the livestock belonging to the co-founder of the colony, Lord Baltimore. That very afternoon, in fact, she paid a soldier for his service with a cow, which I am glad is no longer legal tender for paying army salaries today. <laughs> Despite her courageous leadership and her fantastic advocacy skills, Lord Baltimore was less than appreciate, appreciative of, of Margaret's work. And he made bitter complaint to the assembly, challenging the legality of Margaret Brent's taking of his livestock. The assembly, surprisingly to, to me, responded thusly, we do verily believe and in conscience report that it was better for the colony's safety at that time in her hands than in any man's else in the whole province. Ladies and gentlemen, the battle to educate, to empower, and to appreciate and fully benefit from, as a society, all 100% of the talent available in both our nations continues. From Margaret Brent, I take away that in this battle, we must be bold. We must be true to our word, and we must always remember to take care of the soldiers. Go Army, go Vanderbilt Law, go JAG Corps, go Nall. Thank you. Thank you very, very much.